Love here, and I am so excited that you have decided to do the Who Are You Following study with me. This is going to be so awesome. I believe that it will impact your personal life, your walk with Christ, and just who you are and who you're becoming. I'm so glad that you chose to be here. Let's just dive right in because we have five sessions to get through, and I want to get us started. Y'all, I'll never forget whenever I turned 16 and got my driver's license. All of you just imagine the moment. You know how it feels when you get your license, there is a certain amount of coolness and confidence that comes with that little driver's license. And for me, I got it at just the perfect time, right before football season. And so I'm thinking, y'all, I'm going to be the coolest kid in school because honestly, not many had their license yet. I was one of the first in my grades and I thought, I'm gonna be able to drive all my friends to the football game. So here's my opportunity, one of the first football games of the season, and it's an hour outside of town. And I'm like, even better. I totally got this. I'm gonna get to drive my friends for an hour. And so one brave friend decided to come with me and we were gonna make this drive to the football game. And like I said, we're feeling so cool. We get in that car, we crank up the music, we're ready to get a little dance on, talk about, you know, probably who we had a crush on, all the things, and drive to this football game. Well, of course, I put it in the maps on my phone to make sure I know where I'm going. And I also turned that up loud so I make sure I get to where I'm going. Well, of course I get there, we have a great game, everything's great. And then we decided to leave the game and go back home. And as we left, me feeling super confident and cool, the 16 year old with her license, I'm like, you know what? Who needs the GPS? I got this. That was such a simple drive. All I had to do was make like one turn and then just like drive a while. And then I was here. So on the way back, I'll just make one turn, drive a while and I end up home. Well, friends, let me just tell you, the one turn I had to make, I made the wrong turn. But I didn't realize I made the wrong turn as I'm driving for about 45 minutes. And what's crazy is I literally thought I was recognizing the sights I was seeing. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that house. Oh yeah, I remember that. We we must be getting close to home. Well, about an hour goes by and I'm like, you know, uh, we should actually be seeing like our house right now. I'm thinking this, this is starting to not really look like what I thought we were gonna end up at as we've driven an hour. So I looked to my left, I'll never forget, there was a post office and it said Edora, Arkansas. Y'all, I live in Louisiana, not Arkansas. I was literally in the wrong state. And I'm just gonna tell you, all of my coolness and all of my confidence went out the window in that moment. I'm sitting there and I'm like, not only feeling um, uncool and unconfident, I'm also feeling very afraid, very insecure, a little bit embarrassed. And I'm sitting here and what really came into the reality of my mind in this moment is I'm lost. And friends, that is a terrible feeling to feel lost. It is one that will make you feel afraid. It is one that will make you feel embarrassed. It is one that will make you feel hopeless at times. And I think in a spiritual sense, many of you feel the same way. You took a wrong turn in life. You took a turn that you didn't really mean to take and you've gone down this road for so long that you don't recognize anything around you. You don't recognize who you've become and you're sitting here and the fear is starting to rise up, the anxiety is starting to rise up, you're feeling a little hopeless and you just simply feel lost. And what I came to terms with in that moment is not only am I lost, but also I don't know how to get back home. And maybe you feel the same way. Not only am I lost, but I don't even know how to get back home. But here's the thing that I realized in that moment. I have a GPS. I can just type it back in and there will be a voice that will guide me back home. And for you, I wanna give you the encouragement that it's the same way. The voice of the Lord is here to guide you back home home, to get you back to who you know you've always been called to be, who he called you to be in your mother's womb, that voice is going to guide you back home. But we need to look at a few things to get there, friends. And that's what we're going to do in these next few sessions. Here's the thing. If you're anything like me, I know you might be a person who needs a plan. And so I'm going to give you a general plan for our time as we dive into this study together. We're gonna talk about who we're following and where all this following is leading us. We're gonna get honest about if we're really happy about where it's led us so far. We're gonna talk about where we actually want to end up. If all of this following is leading us somewhere that we actually want to go. It's actually a really important question that we can ask ourselves. 
We're gonna talk about what it will cost us to stay focused on the path we want to be on and to quit taking spiritually equivalent trips to Arkansas. Does that sound like a plan? All right, let's roll. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and call this out. If you're currently flipping back and forth between this video and your Instagram, I just wanna go ahead and ask that you put that away, get rid of the distractions, and give this study your full attention. You might be wondering how I knew you were multitasking, how I knew that your eyes were darting back and forth from this session to social media. And honestly, guys, the reason I knew that is because if you're a human being alive on the planet in the 21st century, then you're most likely always on your phone. And hey, to be honest, I would be too. But literally, we're always on our phone. You want proof? Because I got some. Here's the facts. How about this? A group of researchers recently studied our digital device usage trends and found that half of us take our phones into public restrooms and use them while we're taking care of business. And I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, I'm a part of that half, okay? Don't even lie, you know you are too. Y'all, we are addicted. The same group of researchers also studied how often we clean our phones. Any guesses? If you guess, uh, never, you win. I mean, I don't clean my phone, and you know what? That is so gross. But does that stop us? No. We're walking down a city street, we're scrolling our phone. We're stopped at a traffic light, we scroll our phone. We're waiting to board a plane, we scroll our phone. And even sometimes we're out on a nice date with someone we really actually love and are very interested in. But yeah, you guessed it, we scroll our phone. Surely we stop scrolling our phone when we sleep, right? Wrong. Nearly seven in 10 people admit to scrolling their social media feeds until the moment that they drift their eyes to sleep. Many even fall asleep while they are scrolling, their phones suspended in midair, their thumbs pressing their screen, and their eyes totally shut. Seven and a half hours a day. And that's how much time people 13 to 18 years old spend on social media each day. And for the rest of us, the average is between two and six hours per day. And that's not exactly something to brag about. Every second, nearly a thousand photos are uploaded to Instagram. Every day, more than 8 billion videos are viewed on Facebook. Every year, Snapchat closes in on complete target market control. Currently, the apps reach in the US equates to 90% of all 13 to 24 year olds. That is a lot of snaps. And I wanna say before we keep going, and please hear me when I say this very clearly, I am not against social media. I actually love social media. Social media helps us stay connected to people that we don't see often, and that's such a gift, especially in the times that we've seen lately. It opens our eyes to learning from people who are a little different than us. If you're anywhere near my age, you have literally grown up with social media being a very normal and common part of your life. You don't know any other reality than the one that seems to be revolving around a 24 seven social media verse, if you will. You can't even conceive of a life lived apart from constant posting, constant comments, and constant likes. But here's the thing, what is also true is you can't imagine what it would be like to live in a world where there is no depression, no loneliness, no anxiety, no comparison game, no rampant suicide, when you and I devote an average of five hours of every single day to following people who may or may not where they're going themselves, it is no wonder that we're ending up lost. You are becoming who you're following, friend, and I'm becoming who I'm following too. One of the greatest joys of my job is I get to meet people every year. Mostly they come up to me after a speaking event, they'll give me a hug, they'll introduce themselves, maybe even take a little selfie. But what always strikes me is when people go so deep so fast. I mean, they'll tell me about a relational struggle that they're wrestling with, or dreams that they watched unexpectedly die, maybe even loved ones that they just had pass. They'll tell me about a heartache that they're having to deal with, a terrible diagnosis, a debilitating addiction, maybe even a paralyzing fear they're walking through, or several unanswered prayers that they're wrestling with those thoughts of, God, where are you? And what shocks me is not what these people are saying because I know we all go through hard things. We all have these hard thoughts and these big questions that we have to ask ourselves. But it shocks me that without even knowing me, but only by social media, they'll tell me these big things in their life. And to be honest, it is an honor 
that they would ask me to pray with them, that they would tell me these things, that they would trust me enough to carry their burdens. But something I see in that is that people are so desperate for someone to carry their load with them. They're carrying so much, they're so desperate for a friend, so desperate to be heard, desperate to know that they're still loved after what they've done, desperate to keep going. And you know, that's a very natural thing to desire. But what I want people to realize is that no one with a following on social media or any following they could ever gain from social media can ease their pain and walk with them like Jesus can walk with them. And the same is true for you. You might be carrying all this stuff and you just think, oh, if I just had someone, if I just had a following, if I just had this person, then all of my problems would go away. But really friend, it's if you just have Jesus. Jesus really can carry your burdens. He really does walk with you in the unfiltered moments. When you follow people, your life can be inspired, motivated, and encouraged. But when you follow Jesus, your life can truly change. Over and over again, just say the name Jesus. The Bible says that he is the name above every other name. And you know why it says that? It's because it is true. He is over all things in your life. It is by Jesus that we are rescued from whatever is scarce in our life. It is through Jesus that we can actually find fulfillment. What you're looking for underneath all the things you think you want It's actually Jesus that you're trying to find. You can't follow anything that's more worthy of your follow than Jesus Christ. When you're frustrated or desperate or annoyed or empty, addicted, afraid, when you're feeling entitled or forgotten or abandoned or misunderstood or left out, when we get in this moment, we just go, you know, wander around, following this person, following that person, trying to numb the pain, watch Netflix, do something and just distract ourselves from the place in life that we are. But it's actually in that time that we need the truth more than ever. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul calls the various evidences of God's activity in the world the fruit of the Spirit. This fruit can show up in nine different ways. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, including love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here's the thing, it's a pretty obvious difference in the things that we're typically struggling with in our day, like jealousy, envy, gossip, addiction, lust, depression, you name it, anxiety, whatever it is. Like when you look at the fruit of who God is and when you look at kind of the fruit of the world, they're two completely different different things. There have definitely been times in my life where I've looked a little bit more like the world's ways and the fruit of the world than the fruit of Jesus. When I wanted to stay cool, when I wanted to stay relevant, when my priorities were to be trendy and all of those things, of course, I looked more like the world, but my priorities shifted whenever I actually wanted to look more like Jesus, when I actually wanted to love people well. When you root yourself in the world, your fruit looks like the world, but when you root yourself in the Lord, your fruit looks like the Spirit. In the Gospel of Matthew, we are told to seek first His kingdom. We are talking about the kingdom of God here and His righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you. So here's the question, how do we seek the kingdom of God? We can't seek God's kingdom and the world's kingdom at the same time. We can only go one way at a time. I'm heading wherever Jesus is going. Wherever Jesus is leading, that's where I'm going. My great grandma used to always say, it was almost like awkward whenever she said it because she would say it it about everything. She would say, Lord willing. If you said, I'm going to the grocery store, she'd say, Lord willing. I'm going to this place tomorrow, Lord willing. And it was always just kind of funny, but what a good reminder that I'm only going if the Lord's willing. I'm only going if that's where Jesus is leading me. You see, those people that I respect most in life, they are obsessive followers of Him. They actually love Him. They love to serve Him. They know Him. They even like Him. They can't get enough of Christ. They get that if things like love and joy and patience and self-control are the things that they're in need of, then who better to go to than the one who possesses these things for help? If we lack the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, and if we want the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, then we have to head straight to the source. Don't overthink. It. Don't say, what is his will for me? Where am I going? Where is he leading? Just simply love him. Just simply seek him and he will guide you, friend.